Hey guys, this is Pete from CrunchTimeCoaching.com and today we're going to go over the top 10 lessons you can take away from the French Open to improve your tennis game. I'm an online tennis instructor and I thought that there were so many great impactful lessons from this year's French Open. It was awesome that you can use to get better on the court. So let's get right into it. Uh, I think you're going to learn a lot. So the first one is how important health is. And confidence are to your performance and Patrick Maratuklu who is Serena Williams coach did a beautiful breakdown of how Rafa was affected in the last couple years with his health particularly his wrist he was saying that he uh, a year ago was hitting 22 percent of his shots above that magical 3,000 revolutions per minute. And we know that Rafa is famous for being consistent with that. Well, now that his wrist is better, it's back up to 77%. So what's the takeaway from that? I think it's really understanding when that you're just kind of, you, you have nagging things that are bothering you that's not really an injury versus things that you have to take seriously. Make sure you go see professional help. Make sure you rehab it the right way because it can really impact how you're playing on the courts and the results that are happening for you. Really telling things here. How bad did it get for Rafa? If you can believe this, Last year at the French Open, he hit more backhands than forehands, which again shows to the tremendous grit and fortitude of Rafael Nadal in that he is just so mentally tough that he was willing to go out there and just battle. And we know that uh, he eventually ended up pulling out of the French Open even though he was doing well. And um, and we now can respect how bad he was hurting out there and how tough he was that he was still able to compete and not able to use his biggest weapon that has really made him a legend in the game. Here's another thing, is now it's showing that he is back. You see Patrick staying here and saying that now Roth is hitting 32% of his balls inside of the baseline this year. So you can see that he still goes way back too. It shows the, the importance of being able to play offense and defense. But no matter what style of player you are, if you can get inside the baseline and play some offense too, that's very important. Last year, he was inside here 14% of the time. So it just goes to show how bad Rafa was hurting and how it's affecting his performance. And now that he's back, what a big difference these things are making for him. Okay, number two is no lead is insurmountable. We had Ostapenko down yesterday, 6 4 3 0 to Simona Halep, and she came back and just played an amazing match. She really is something else the way she can hit those winners from anywhere on the court. And what was interesting is her opponent. Simona Halep, she was down a set and I believe 5-2 and came back and won in three sets to get to the finals. So it just goes to show the importance of keep believing in yourself. Don't give up. You can really come back from any lead if you really believe that you can. And also it shows that if you do have a big lead, you got to stay focused. You got to know what's getting you there. And you got to keep doing those same things. You can't coast. You can't check out. You can't start thinking about the finish line and start playing not to lose the match because then bad things can happen. So, uh, really, really good lesson there. Okay, let's go to lesson number three. Is this is more about when you're not necessarily even on the court, but just things that are going on in your life and maybe you're running into a rut. You're not going to play your whole tennis career. And I want you to look at your tennis as a career. I know that, you know, you and I are not getting paid to go out there and play matches, but we take our tennis very seriously. And there's going to be times where we're kind of lost in the sport. It happens to everybody, even the greatest players of all time. And but what's interesting is to look at how they treat adversity, all right? It's easy to bag on Novak right now, but this is where true champions show their mindset and show you how they were able to get to the top. Right now, Novak admits he's lost. He goes, it's tough to get out and figure out you know, what's going on, how to move ahead, and he says, at least I'm trying. 
I know that I have achieved the biggest heights in this sport, and that memory and that experience gives me reason to believe I can do it again. And now, whether Novak does it or not, it's that mindset of a champion that is at least going to give him a fighting chance to get back up to the top. Remember, guys, a couple of years ago, we were all very, very concerned about Rafa. In fact, at the beginning of this year, no one would have predicted that Rafa would have got to the finals of the Australian Open and now just be killing it in the clay court season. People were talking about him you know, losing some spin on the ball, losing a step, and thinking that all that pounding, that aggressive play that he had and the injuries were finally going to do him in, and now he's right back to the pinnacle of the sport, and he may very well finish this year number one in the world. So even in your downtime, guys, it's so important to believe in yourself, and I'm certainly rooting for Novak. I love Novak. I love all the players on the tour. I just have so much respect for them. So let's go to number four. Number four is the clay court season always shows us how important it is to develop a good drop shot and to use it at the right times. Uh, you know, it's so important that that you understand your court positioning when it's the right time to use a drop shot. You see some people use it at the wrong time. They're two feet behind the baseline, then they try that drop shot, and that's not a good time. But you can see right here, Rafa's inside the court, most likely going to hit a little drop shot here. And Rafa has that huge, big topspin forehand, but he's also got beautiful touch. And if you watch the way he uses it, he can back someone off the court, get them hanging back and then move inside the court and then all of a sudden with a little disguise he puts that little drop shot he's got a beautiful forehand drop shot too by the way so really develop a good drop shot it can really throw people off their game especially if you're out there playing recreational tennis and you're over 40 years old people as we get older we just don't want to run forward for those balls so it's a good way to win a lot of cheap points out there all right Number five is develop a rally ball that is hard to attack. And Rafa plays tremendous offense, but he also has what I like to think of as a rally ball, a ball that he's getting into a rally that is a very high percentage, meaning that he's not going to miss it a whole lot, but he's not pushing either. You know, he's not giving a ball that's just going in the court. He's got as we know, tremendous revolution on the ball. It's spinning. And for him, it's a very safe shot. Now, the good news for us is we don't have to hit it near as a hard and aggressive as Rafa to develop a pretty good rally ball. We just have to keep it deep. If you can get the ball be you know somewhere in this area of the court of your watching this, if you can master and just get it here and beyond. There are very few players out there, probably even up to a 5-0 level, that are going to hurt you. It's just getting that ball deep and with a, with a little bit of pace, a little bit of spin, and you will be virtually unattackable. You know, it's just when you're leaving the ball up here or you don't have much pace on the ball that you're going to get yourself in trouble. So go out there, work hard on developing a shot that you can get three to six feet over the net that gets deep and has some kind of spin on the ball. People are going to have a very tough time hurting you. Also, look to get out of their strike zones. If you're hitting the ball from here to here to people, they can attack you. But if you can get it above their shoulders or below their knees, guys, you're going to win a lot of points. All right, so let's go to the next one, number six. Defense wins championships, and so does offense. All right, so you want to be a multi-dimensional player, and I think that the Pro Tour right now, we've never had so many amazing all-around players to where they can play just incredible defense, get well behind the baseline, get some balls back, do whatever they can to get it back. And then they're able to get back inside the court. And within a shot or two, they're back on offense and are able to hit the winners. So you got to have both. You got to have really good defense and really good offense. And if I were to pick one, to be honest with you, at the recreational level, I would say if you are a very good defensive player, you're probably going to win more points than being a very good offensive player. So if you're gonna work on one over the other, so many people wanna just work on hitting winners because it's a lot of fun, but if you can always get the ball back, and again, like we talked about in point number five, hit it in an area that's hard to attack, 
you're going to drive people crazy and you're going to win a ton of matches. But it's also important and it feels great that when you can get inside the court that you can do something with the ball. So make sure you're working on both of those skills. Number seven is don't let the past scare you. It's very easy to let certain players or certain tournaments or certain situations that have not gone well for you in the past to intimidate you and ultimately get in your head and make you lose that match. Well, Dominic Team was finally ready to make a pretty good move into the French Open, and he really looks like, like he's going to be a player that's going to be around for a long time. And he was 0-5 going into that match against Novak Djokovic. And in fact, just a couple of weeks before, he got you know t taken to the cleaners by Novak. Basically, Novak beat up on him pretty good. But... Uh, I remember watching a press conference before he was going to go on, on the court against Novak, and he said that he's 0-5, he's got to talk to his coaches and come up with a game plan. But you could just tell by his mindset, the way he was talking, he truly believed that he was ready to win, that, that it was just a matter of coming up with a good game plan, and he executed that he believed that he could beat Novak. And he did. In fact, he won the third set 6-0, which was kind of tough for Novak fans to watch. But this kid's a great player, and I wish him all the luck in the world. Okay, number eight is work on your inside-out forehand. If you can develop this shot, it's such a great weapon because... Everybody, men and women on the tour, this is one of those shots that, that seems to get better and better every year for the pro players. And that's simply if, if, if you're here and you move, and instead of taking this as a backhand, you're taking it as a forehand. And what's really good is if you can hit it inside out, and inside in now the now your opponent is just kind of staying here and they, they don't know what to do they don't know what you're going to do with the ball and it's a great way to really keep your opponent off balance and add another layer of offense to your game so work on your inside out forehand it's very noticeable on the pro tour uh, as far as what a tremendous weapon this can be right, next it's so important Lots of uh, kind of old school coaches and commentators will talk about how, you know, net play is dead, how it's a lost art. And when you think about Rafa, you think about big forehands, you think about incredible defense, you think about power, you think about spin. You rarely think about net play. But uh, one of the best volleyers of all time, John McEnroe, always talks about what a great volleyer. Rafa Nadal is. And again, if you're really watching closely at the French Open, you can see how many points that Rafa is coming in on. And when he comes in, he does a great job of finishing at the net. So it's so important to just not get obsessed with your ground strokes, but to have solid technique. In fact, look at this beautiful picture of Rafael Nadal. Everything's perfect. Look at his eyes watching the ball. Look at the racket head up. Look at how he's going to make tremendous, beautiful contact here, where so many people come in and they don't have the setup of the ball. The racket is not finding the ball and set up for success, and they move the wrist a lot. Watch Rafael of volley he's got beautiful technique and he's able to win a ton of points at the net even though he's known for his baseline play last but not least is really work on your top spin ground strokes now rafa he is like the standard right he's the gold standard of top spin and i'm not asking you to get as great as rafa on the top spin that's pretty much impossible to do he is he is the master among masters but you can improve it and even if you are somebody who has been confused on how to do it or you think well you know i've got old school strokes I can teach you how to hit topspin on the forehand, I promise you. In fact, I have a no-fail drill. So if you look at this link, I'll put it in the description. I'll put it on the video. You see our crunchtimecoaching.com forward slash Rafael Nadal. I'm going to give you my number one no-fail topspin drill that if you go practice it, I promise you, you'll go, oh, that's how you make that ball spin. Pretty cool. And you'll get the instant loop and rotation on the ball. So if you've ever struggled with that, make sure that you go to this website, crunchtimecoaching.com forward slash Rafael Nadal, 
and you will be able to start learning how to hit top spin. If you want to take it another step forward, I also have a course just on spin. So make sure you take advantage of that. And then I want to give you one bonus tip. This is my favorite quote of the tournament. If you watch Simona Halep, in which she was obviously heartbroken, and she said she was, she gave such a classy uh speech at, at in the ceremony of the finals of the French Open and I just thought it, it really spoke to the class of all our athletes we've made a lot of videos on the French Open and sometimes uh, I get accused of being biased towards certain players and I want I want to let everybody know that I love every tennis player right now on the tour there's no one that I don't have ultimate respect for and I think our sport is at such a high standard of class. I'm so proud of our sport and Simona was just beautiful when she lost and then she says to her, to her box, let's keep working and let's believe. And I thought that was beautiful because obviously she put her heart into that match and she gave it everything she had and she had every reason to be heartbroken and feeling sorry for herself and then she's basically trying to motivate her team by saying let's keep working and let's believe and that is such a beautiful life lesson of tennis because tennis it's just you out there and tennis lots of times is going to show you exactly where you're failing and, and there's no, you know, uh, gray area. It's black and white. You either made it or you didn't. And, and uh, you're always going to have to have the skill of looking for the positive, looking for the, for the silver lining, and, and, and getting yourself up to try again. Even though, you know, you keep going against that wall, you keep hitting that brick wall, and you keep failing, it comes from within you to keep working and keep believing. So, Simona, thank you for that beautiful beautiful ending to your speech and guys let's keep working let's believe if you love tennis what I want is a like on this video to like yourself like this video like me <laughs> and and subscribe if you love tennis please subscribe to this channel because it's all about tennis it's all about instruction it's all about following the tour and giving you my opinions on on uh, what is happening sometimes I'm right and sometimes I'm not but I try my best just like the players on the tour and thanks so much for watching this video and we'll see you on future videos guys this is Pete from crunch time coaching signing off